உடைக்கப்பட்டது மற்றவர்களை கட்டுவதற்காக யூ ஏ புரோக்கன் டு பில்ட் அதர்ஸ் இன்னைக்கு உலகத்தில் யாரா இருந்தாலும் எப்படிப்பட்டவர்களாக இருந்தாலும் ஒரு காலகட்டத்தில் எல்லாருமே உடைக்கப்படுகிறோம் நோ மேட்டர் வது யோர் ரிச் புவர் யோர் ஃபேர் யோர் டார்க் யோர் டால் யோர் ஷார்ட் யோர் ஃபேட் யோர் தின் டசன் மேட்டர் வது யோர் எஜுகேட்டட் அன்எஜுகேட்டட் படித்தவங்க படிக்காதவங்க எல்லாருமே வாழ்க்கையில் ஒரு காலகட்டத்தில் உடைக்கப்படுகிறோம் பட் த குட் நியூஸ் இஸ் God uses broken people to build others. Udain the vargle kattar matro vargle kattu vargle kaga pain bharthira. Rethri bhe rame chol ringe. Hallelujah. The children of God, broken clouds give rain. Broken soil produce crops. Broken grains give food. Broken Jesus gave life. Rethri bhe rame chol ringe. Udain the mega malay kudukkudu. Udain the nelo, uludhe nelo. பயிரை கொடுக்குது உடைந்த தானியம் உணவை கொடுக்குது உடைந்த கத்தர் நமக்காக உடைக்கப்பட்டார் ஜீவனை கொடுத்தார் இனி கத்தர் சொல்லுகிறார் நீ உடைக்கப்பட்டா உண்மை கொண்டு நான் மற்றவர்களை கட்டுவேன் திருப்பி ராமே சொல்றீங்க ஹலலூயா யூ ஆர் புரோக்கன் நாட் ஜஸ்ட் பி ரீபில்ட் பட் டு பில்ட் அதர்ஸ் டிசன் காட் மெனி டைம் யூ டோன்ட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் திஸ்ராபிளி யூ கோயிங் த்ரூ சம்பிளிங் இன் யோர் லைஃப் யூ நாட் இன் கண்ட்ரோல் சம்திங் யூ பிளான் டிட் நாட் ஹேப்பன் something you expected at a particular time did not happen everything went out of your way don't go as per plans but god is saying i allowed all of this to happen i shut the door so that you could be broken to build others amen amen hallelujah i don't know how many of you guys saw my promo all right i was before a construction building i took a stone which was broken and i explained that sometimes people break stones into half to finish a wall right it's not always the whole bricks which complete a wall but it's the broken wicks which actually become the finishing piece today god is saying i'm going to use such broken pieces today to complete walls of people's life amen amen are you excited that god's going to use you come on if you're excited say i am excited come on i need to hear your voice say i am excited come on i am excited for you guys i am excited see you could be whoever you are yeah probably your life's messed up your marriage messed up your career is messed up your health is messed up but you know still god will use all of this for glory and to rebuild others amen now today you have a choice dear children of god because of your brokenness you can have a pity party all right where you can talk to everybody and say you know what this happened in my life this happened in my life you know what you don't know what i'm going through i've gone through this you don't know my pain oh you just can't talk like this you don't know what all i've seen in life i don't want to see what all you saw all right especially what you saw in your phone no we try to have a pity party saying oh this happened in my life this happened in my life and we always talk about what happened or you have a choice to get all fired up and say you know no matter what's happened in my life i'm going to stand on my feet again and i'm going to be a blessing for others because that's what my god has called me for i have a calling upon my life and i as i was broken but right now i'm going to get more stronger to build others amen amen come on can i see some strong people in the house lifting hands and say i am going to be building others hallelujah i want you to turn your bibles to the book of john chapter 9 and verse 3 there there are people who see a blind man all right and they come and ask jesus jesus why was this man born blind was it because of his father's mistake or his mother's mistake who did something wrong that this man was born blind all right but then i i like the message version all right if you have an english bible where it has a message version jesus is saying you are asking the wrong question the other version says neither is man nor is power and sin jesus is saying you are asking the wrong question and he says you are looking for someone to blame that's why you are asking this question jesus why did this happen is it because of them is it because of him her or is it because of me or did i do something wrong Oh, oh yeah, yeah did i mess up oh you know what it's all because of my parents oh you know what this is what i saw and this is what i grew up with this is what my parents influenced me 
oh, you know the area where I grew up. Jesus is saying, are you trying to blame someone by asking this question, why this happened? The Lord is saying, there is no cause effect. This happened in his life so that the works of God might be displayed through him. Amen. Dear Chinnam, come on, come on, say a loud amen, guys. Yeah. You've come for a 10 o'clock service and you're still sleeping. All right. I, well, can, I, can I hear some people who are alive in this house? Can I hear your voice? Amen. amen. Have you brought your hands? No, can you can just pull them out and show that you have hands? Yeah, amen. Oh, thank you, God. All right. Or else then I'll have to start praying. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, all the dead bones. Dear children of God, today, if you can read this verse, this verse is clearly saying, because the world is constantly telling us, you know what? This is the consequence of what you did. All right? If you're talking about consequences, there's no use that Jesus died on the cross for all of us. All right? If it's a consequence of what we did in the past, if God's going to repay us for all that we did in the past, we will not be alive today. All right? Probably it's a generational curse. No. God is saying, at times you go through brokenness, at times I chisel, I break, I mold, I remove, so that my works could be displayed in your life. Amen. Are you there with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and say, His works should be displayed in my life. So today God is saying, you were broken so that my works could be displayed. My first point for today, broken people are the ones who recognize their need for God. Only when we are broken, we realize and we recognize that we are in need of God. All right? Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes we fall. Sometimes we fail to understand that we need God. All right? Only when I fall can I understand His love and His mercy. Only when I fail that I have a God who uplifts me. So today the Lord is saying, People who are broken, they are the ones who recognize my need. I look at these two people who went to pray in church. Luke chapter 18 verse 11. There was a Pharisee who stood by himself and prayed, God, come on. All right, all those righteous Joes out there. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. All right, I'm not like other people who are robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. All right? I fast twice a week, and you know what? And I give a tenth of all that I get. Oh, this guy says, no, look at this prayer, full of pride. Dear children of God, sometimes God breaks us because of our pride. All right? You know what? People who say that I'm humble, 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 you know what? Pastor, I'm very humble. They are the ones who are actually very proud. Have you, have you noticed people who say, if you're, if you're humble, boss, you don't need to say it. We will know if you're humble. You don't have to tell us you're humble. All right? It will show. So there are people who say, you know what, God, I fast twice a week and I give tenth of all that I, you know, all that I get. And you know what, I am not like them. Have you seen these people who sometimes get newly, newly accept Christ and the ones who come, you know, newly commit their lives to do God's work? You should see all their postings. Their postings will be so judgmental. All right, all their postings, the ones who suddenly crop up and the ones who suddenly give their life to Christ or the ones who would come to do missions or suddenly they come and say, I'm, look at all their postings. It will be all about, you know, God's coming soon. Oh, don't do this. All judgmental postings. But then Jesus says, there's this one guy who prays like this. There's the other guy, the tax collector, who stood at a distance and he prays. He, he, he would not even look up to heaven. He said, he would not even look up, but beats his chest and said, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. All right? This is what brokenness does. Brokenness actually humbles us. Lord, I have not come this far because of what I've done. I have not become a pastor because I've chosen. It's only because of your grace. Sometimes people say, oh, pastor, you left Australia, you left everything and you came. Boss, please don't talk about all this because I did not do it on my strength. Because it was the Lord who chose this unworthy vessel, the Lord who chose this garbage to do God's work. So this guy says, you know what? I rely on you more because 
I know that I'm a broken person. Dear children of God, brokenness helps us to recognize that we are in need of God. All right? Dear children of God, if you're broken today, sometimes you know the paths we go. Sometimes even sickness makes us recognize that we are in need of God. No matter the, you might have the best medicine, the best treatment, but you know we need a God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was this one, um, this, this, this is doctor in our church, Dr. Sahana. Yesterday she called me and I said, it's been a long while why you called me. She said, no, one uh, I'm undergoing a surgery right now. I was, I was diagnosed with a cyst. I was like, doctor. She's like, yes, and I have, I'm undergoing a surgery. Pray for me. And I had to pray. And you know, doc, as I was praying for a doc, doc, God was telling me, boss, doctors, even doctors need God. They might know everything. They might have studied medicine. They might probably operate on others. But then when it comes to them, they still need God. Dear children of God, at times, God allows us to go through this process to recognize and realize that we are in need of God. Amen. Hello, can we just lift our hands and say, Lord, Lord, I need you. I cannot do it on my own. I need you at every moment of my life. Amen. That's a simple prayer, but very powerful. Brokenness grows our trust in God. All right? Whenever we are broken, actually, that's when we actually start trusting God more. All right? If you look at the life of Job, the devil tried to break him. He removed everything. All right? But then for me, I have a request to God when I go to heaven. I want to meet those three friends of Job who came to console him. All right? Sometimes at times we have these relatives and friends who, you know, who come in the form of saying, no, I have come to comfort you. And you know what? They break us even more. Boss, you advice in a boss. You know what? Did you do that? Probably because you did this. Probably because you made that. Probably your children did something. They Please stop. Oh, they just don't stop. Even if you send them out of the house, they will go back home and send you a WhatsApp message. More than all their advice, they will send some verses, forward some Bible verses, which will even more freaking. Why do I need this verse? Already I am broken. Right? His friends broke more. And the first chapter, he loses everything. Until 42nd chapter, he does not hear from God. But this guy's trust grows. And you know, in 42nd chapter, 5th verse, he says, Lord, you know what? I've heard of you by the hearing of the hear. But then now, my eyes see you. After being broken. Decision of God, you know, this brokenness takes, to us, takes us to a place where we actually start seeing God. Until we are broken, our eyes are always focused on people. But then the day we are broken and we go into this place, where you're all alone and there's nobody standing with you, that's when you realize, oh my God, Lord Jesus, I can for sure see you clearly because there's nobody around except you. Amen? This is God. I want to encourage you. Your brokenness is going to make you start seeing God more in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. And you know what? I am willing to go through anything in my life to see God in my life. If that can make me see God, oh yes, I'm willing to go through any of it. If only I can see God. Now, let's come to the blessing part. Right? I think now you guys will get excited. You are broken so that you could be a blessing. Now, if you can turn your Bibles to the book of Esther. Any Esthers here? All right. Many people name their child or their daughter's Esther. All right? Because, you know, Esther's been a queen. Oh, like Queen Esther, I want my daughter to be Esther. All right? But then people forget the journey she went through. People only look at the portion she had. Many people Dave, name their sons David. Any Davids, please excuse me. Like, David because King David. But then people forget that David was being chased. David will be chased. All right? Moses! Oh, the great leader, 
people forget the child will have to go through wilderness all right so before you name your child be very careful now esther esther was broken to be a blessing if you can turn your bibles to the book of esther chapter 2 verse 5 we know the story the king sends away his wife Vashti because she was arrogant he sends him now the king starts to look for a new queen the word of God said at the time there was a Jewish man in the fortress of Susa whose name was Mordecai son of Jair he was from the type of Benjamin and was a descendant of Kish and Shemai his family had been among those who with King Joachim of Judah had been exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar this man had a very beautiful lovely young cousin all right Initially, it's very nice to hear. Very beautiful, very young, lovely cousin. Our imagination might run wild right now, thinking which heroines would she resemble. But then there's a background. Hadassah, who was also called Esther, when her father and mother died, all right, now, broken, father and mother died, Mordecai adopted her into this family and raised her as order. Now look at Esther, the so-called Queen Esther was taken as a slave all right a jewish girl in a persian land persian land where she's not welcome persian land where she's hated persian land where people looks at her as a slave a girl who's lost her mother and father who is an orphan broken on all sides but then dear children of god there was no hope that she will at least get married to a decent guy but then she went through all of this in her journey for the rod to raise her to be a queen amen hallelujah this of god this morning i want to encourage you if you've been through tough times and if you've been broken and if you think oh my god i may not have a life like that girl or this man or this woman today the lord is saying the slave girl esther who lost her parents who lost her hope who was not welcomed in the persian land the lord broke her and lifted her up to be a queen and today the lord is saying if i can do that through her i can do much more in your life as well Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what? She was broken and she was taken to that position so that she could be a blessing for others. All right? Brokenness leads you to be a blessing. All right? Now, most importantly, if you can make a note, you can make a note. You are broken for a calling. All right? You are broken for a blessing is okay, but then you are broken for a calling. If you are called, if you believe that I am called for the Lord for a purpose, you know what, dear children of God, it is a given that you will be broken. People who are called before the Lord uses them will be broken. You are broken for a calling. Now Esther gets to know that Mordecai is in sackcloth and Mordecai, her uncle is crying. She becomes a queen, by the way. All right, I'm not getting into the details of the story. She becomes a queen. I don't know what the king liked in her, but then there was God in her life. The king liked her. She becomes a queen. Now, Mordecai sends a message to Esther the queen saying, you know what? Haman is working against us and they have planned to kill all the Jews. I want you to go to the king right now and speak to him about this. And you know what Esther says? Was, uncle, I know you adopted me, you took care of me, all that is okay, uncle. But to go to the king without him calling me, he will kill me. All right? There are people who tell me, pastor, everything is okay, pastor. We like you, we love you. You know, we know that you pray for us. But you know what? To come with you to Bihar. Whatever you want us to do, we'll do from here. But with come you to Bihar, Pastor. But then I, I love the way Madhakai answers. If you keep quiet at this time, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. All right, dear children of God, you need to understand if you apply for a job to a company and you say, no boss, I don't want to work with you, he will have other thousand employees waiting to join that company. It's you who lose the opportunity to work in that company. Today, if you keep giving excuses, the Lord is saying, boss, I have deliverance and revival and anything will arise from somewhere else. I will use somebody else, not you. But then... I love the way the Lord puts it. Mordecai puts it here. I love the way the Lord still has a concern over us. He says, who knows, perhaps, 
you were made queen for such a time as this. Amen. He says, you are probably put in this place, in this spot, because I have chosen you for a big purpose. Dear children of God, this morning I want to encourage you wherever you are, all right? You are in this place, you are appointed by God in this place for a reason. You should have said an amen by now. People, if you believe that if you are here in this place, God is saying you are in that family for a particular reason. You are in that job for a particular reason. You are in that area for a particular reason. You are born to such parents for a particular reason. You have such children for a particular reason. You have a pastor like this for a particular reason. Right? You are in this place and God says for a particular reason. And Esther says, okay, let me go out in faith. Because so long, I was nobody and God has brought me here. And you know what? Let me take a chance. And she says, come on, I want everybody to fast and pray. I'm not going into the verses. She says, let's all fast and pray and let me take a step of faith. So she said, for three days, no food, no drinks. Let's all fast and pray. And then she moves on. And the best part is, she goes to the king and, come on, listen to this carefully. She does not stretch her forth her hand. All right? She goes to the king and the king stretched forth his hand. The most important thing is we as Christians, boss, my humble request is, please don't stretch your hands. All right? If you want to receive a blessing from God, the Lord will make the king stretch forth his hands. Amen? Are you in need? Do you need finances? Do you need a job? Don't be stretching forth your hand. That's not a job at all. All right? You just walk into a place and the Lord will make the king stretch forth his hands for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, are you waiting for, for a favor? Are you waiting for a blessing? The Lord is probably telling you, it's high time you stop stretching your hand. You will stretch your hands only to bless people, not to receive. Amen. And today the Lord is saying, if I have put you in a place, wait till the king stretches forth his hands. Because if you stretch forth your hand, they'll cut you off. And you know what? The king stretches his hand forth. Do you of God? We go through times of testings and brokenness because the Lord has appointed us in a place to make sure that we be a blessing there. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear children of God, this morning, are you feeling that, Lord, why am I in this place? Or are you feeling out of place? Lord, probably did I make the wrong decision? I'm here right now. No, no, no. The Lord is talking to you very clearly and saying, you have been put in this place for such a time as this, whereas I will use you, I will use your brokenness to give a breakthrough in others' life. Come on, say an amen. Come on, say an amen. Probably if you're going through the sickness, Probably you're going through a pain. Probably you're going through faith. God is saying, for a time like this. My last point for today is, you are broken for a breakthrough. You're broken for a blessing. You're broken for a calling. You're broken for a breakthrough. All right? The book of Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. There is this sinner woman, all right, who goes to Jesus. All right? And everybody are watching there. He's having lunch or dinner at Pharisee's house. And everybody are watching. And this woman, Luke chapter 7, verse 37, 38, just comes there. All right? Sat down. She came with a bottle of very expensive perfume. Stood at the feet of Jesus, weeping, raining tears on his feet. A broken woman. Broken by many people. Broken physically, broken mentally, broken emotionally, broken by words, especially by the godly people around her. All right? Many times I tell you, more than the worldly people, it's the godly people who break us. All right? The so-called godly. Weeping, raining tears on his feet, letting down her hair, she dried his feet, kissed them, anointed them with perfume. And when the Pharisee who saw him, who invited him, he said to himself, if this man was a prophet, I thought... He was, and he would have known what kind of a woman this is. All right? These guys were saying, you know what? If he was a prophet, he would have known what kind of a woman this is. 
But my dear children of God, we need to be very careful because he knows what kind of people we are. Jesus probably would have been thinking, boss, I am a prophet more than knowing what kind of a woman that she is. I know what kind of a person you are. It's so easy to judge people. It's so easy to comment. All right. Now if the Lord is talking to you and telling you, boss, before we do all of that, the Lord is saying, I know everything. And you know what? This broken woman broke the perfume, poured his feet. And the Lord says, boss, as long as the world is there, people will remember your act. Amen? Her brokenness brought in deliverance to so many people. Dear children of God, this morning I want to encourage you. Your brokenness and whatever you do during your times of brokenness will be remembered by everybody because God's going to use this brokenness in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Brokenness leads to multiplication. 5,000 people, Jesus took the bread broke it as soon as he broke the bread it was multiplied dear children of god this morning i also want to encourage you if you're going through a period of brokenness that brokenness will bring in multiplication amen hallelujah the more the israelites were oppressed the word of god says the more they multiply and one last word we had communion this morning and the word of god says as we were eating he took the bread broke it he was broken ultimately so that we could be saved. So today the Lord is telling us today, if I went through that path of brokenness as my disciple, you will also probably have to go through the brokenness to become a blessing. This one of God, our brokenness could be different. The way the Lord breaks you, the way the Lord breaks me is all different. We cannot compare the way the Lord breaks and it's not going to be the same. He will use different methods. All right? But you know what? But one thing is the same. We will all be broken in different ways, but to build others. Amen.